Hello everybody, welcome to The Dev Method. My name is Ricky. Let's talk about some slice types. So imagine you have an array or a collection and you want only like the first couple elements or the last couple elements. So there's a special thing you can use in Rust called slices and I'm gonna show you that today. So let's look at a function called first word. Notice its signature takes a reference to a string and then it returns um, a u size, which will be the index. And what we're doing is we're looking through the entire string for the first space, and then we're going to be returning that index of the space. So to do this, we have s uh, dot as bytes on line 13. That gives us just an array or a sequence of bytes. And then we're using the iter, so we're getting an iterator from this. And then from there, even further, we call enumerate. So that way we're not just getting a reference to each of these items, but we're also getting the index at which this reference was found. And then we have the if check here, so item equals, and then this is actually a, um, a byte of a, a, the, the space. So the character is represented as a byte, and it's a space. So we check for that, and if we find it, then we return i. Now if at the very end we find no space, we're just going to return um, the length of this sequence, which uh, is going to be one more than the actual amount of bytes within the string. So interesting note here is if we wanted to break out of the for loop early, we do have this uh, return syntax, and then we have the i. So I thought that was kind of cool. So let's actually put this function to use. So here I have a mutable string, s, and uh, I pass in a reference to it for the word, and then um, I clear it. Now the thing is, is that word now doesn't actually or like this string is cleared. So if I wanted to get use this index of word and go back into that string, it actually wouldn't be valid. So it's kind of like a balancing act right now. We have to balance the two just to get to the right information and have the data be valid anymore. So let's strip this down real quick. Um, let's just say we have a string s. Now if we want to actually just get the first word out of it, since we know what it is, just hello here, uh, we actually use this range. So we're saying from the zero index to five, but not including five. So it'll be zero through four. So that would be H-E-L-L-O, and then the space is actually the five, so that's where we don't want that. So we're just getting hello here. And then the same thing with world, so this is the end part of the string. And then 11 here, uh, again, it's not included. So now another way we could write this too, like let's say we wanted the entire string, we could do zero through the length of the string, which again is one plus the last index of this string. So that would actually work because it doesn't include that, that len or that last index. Another way we could write this too is that we can actually have no number specified. So we could do zero to like the end of the string, so that works, or we could do like starting at the length of the string and then all the way to the beginning. So yeah, a couple different right ways to write the same thing. So we're going to assume with this string uh, that we only have ASCII characters and not the full UTF-8 encoded text. Uh, but right now we're just looking at simple letters. Um, so in this case, let's look back at um, first word. And instead of returning the index, let's actually return a slice or the string. So in this case, we're doing the for if again. Um, and right now, when we find that space, now we're going to say, OK, well, take that out, that index, so not including the space, and then return everything before it. So that's what that's doing there. And again, as our default, if we can't find a space, we're just going to return the whole string, but as a slice this time. So now down in main, let's take a look at what this might uh, look like. So we have the string again, passing the reference to it. We got word. Now we do have clear here. And then we're referencing word after. So this is actually pretty cool. So um, there's actually going to be an error, and Rust is going to catch this for you. So let's do a cargo build. So notice here we have, uh, there's the first word. That's the immutable borrow. Then we have a mutable borrow occurring here, because we're actually referencing the mutable part of the string, which it clears it, allows you to mutate it in place. But then we access that immutable borrow later afterwards. So next question is, how do we fix this? Well, it's actually pretty simple. We could just reverse the order, make sure we use the word uh, that index or that, that slice there while it's actually still valid and it gives us the right information before we actually clear the string. So let's try and build that and see if that works. Cargo build. 
Yeah, so that works. So that's pretty cool, right? So let's actually update our first word signature here real quick uh, because there's maybe a slight little optimization that we can make. Uh, any experienced Rust programmer might see this. So S, instead of taking um, the capital string type, we're going to take the lowercase str, a reference to that, because actually a reference to the capital S string will actually be the same thing. We'll be able to use both here and then also return then the, the string uh, slice. Um, we can also use string literals in this as well. So it'll actually be very versatile. So uh, I made that update here in first word. Let's go to the main and let's look at all the different variations of how it can be used now. So here it is string. And then we have um, here, we're just grabbing a, another slice um, out of the word and then asking what, what that word is. Uh, then here we get the entire string slice and then we're just passing in the whole string itself. So notice this is the string type, the capital S string, and it actually still works. So that's pretty cool. Now here's a string literal, right? So a string literal is actually um, that uh, reference to an, a lowercase str. So that string here, pass in, and we can really use it the same way, get slices from that slice or from that string literal, the same way we did the capital S string. And then we can also pass in just the string literal itself. So we have a multitude of ways to actually use this function. So I know we've been talking about strings so far. You can actually use this on other collections. So the collection that I'm using this with now is just uh, an array of i32 integers or numbers. So here they are. Get the slice and then print it out. Here we're just asserting equals that it's uh, exactly what we expect, which it will be. That's how that works there. So we'll see slices again in the book, um, specifically in chapter eight of the Rust programming book. Um, and this is when we discuss vectors. So hopefully this helps clear up a little bit of maybe confusion that you guys had about slices, but then also how it relates to borrowing and uh, the rules that we discussed in the previous video. So if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, uh, have a good one.